The damage caused by the explosion of a Russian ammunition depot near Janko in temporarily occupied Crimea cannot be exactly assessed, but due to the detonation of shells that scattered around, the railway tracks were damaged. Trains from Russia are now unable to reach Simferopol and Sevastopol. There were also reports of an explosion at an important power plant in this area. Every day and every night we see new reports of explosions in the territory temporarily occupied by the occupiers. I am now asking all our people in Crimea, in other regions in the south of the country, in the occupied areas of Donbass, in the Kharkiv region, to be very careful. Please do not approach the military objects of the Russian army and all those places where they store ammunition and equipment, where they keep their headquarters. The reasons for the explosions in the occupied territory can be different. Very different. In particular, I quote the definition of the occupiers themselves, bungling. Russia calls the explosions near Jankoy an act of sabotage, and it does not comment on the explosion at a military airfield near Simferopol, which occurred just a few hours after the incident in Jankoy. Ukraine does not report its involvement. People rush to leave the occupied peninsula, as evidenced by the record traffic jam on the Kerch Bridge. During the past day there was record traffic on it, more than 38,000 cars. The war came unexpectedly to Crimea. The occupiers and colonizers are already fleeing Crimea. There are huge quests to get out of Crimea. Over the six months of the full-scale war and last week, the occupying administrations have been claiming Crimea and the people are not threatened by anything. The Russian defense military again speaks about a fire in ammunition depot. People think otherwise. Tamila Tasheva, permanent representative of the president of Ukraine in the Autonomous Republic of Crimea, on Facebook. The situation on the fronts has not changed significantly and the enemy is trying to conduct offensives along the entire front line. The Donetsk region remains the main target, the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine reported. In the Avdiivka direction, tanks and artillery of different types shelled territories near Avdiivka, Marinka, New York, Oleksandropil, Piski, Vodyane, Opetne and Neveselke. The enemy carried out airstrikes in the areas of Marinka, Krasnogorivka and Yesenovata as well, as conducted aerial reconnaissance by unmanned aerial vehicles near Krasnogorivka and Opetne. There were attempts to conduct an assault near Opetne. The fighting continues. During the day, the Russian occupiers massively shelled the Zaporizhia and Dnipropetrovsk regions. One civilian was killed and six wounded in Orihiv. Four were wounded in Nikopol. The city of Kharkiv was also hit by missiles. One citizen was killed and eight more were wounded. First, there was one boom. Then the siren sounded. We went out and the heavy shelling started. About half past 11 it hit. We heard windows crashing down, slate falling off the roof. We waited until it stopped. Uh, we came out and there was no more vegetable garden, no more windows. We don't know what to do. The Ukrainian armed forces hit an enemy base in temporarily occupied Lysychansk. The Luhansk Regional Military Administration reports that up to a hundred Russian soldiers were eliminated during the shelling. I don't even know how to announce the news. The Luhansk region destroys the occupiers. Or an explosion again in Wysychansk. Or maybe smoking kills. To be continued. Serhii Haidai, head of the Luhansk Regional Military Administration, on Facebook. On the night of August 17th, Russian occupiers attacked southern and eastern regions of Ukraine with missiles. They hit a recreation center in the Odessa region. Three people were wounded. A university in Mykolaiv and residential buildings in the Nikopol and Krivoy Rikh districts of the Dnipropetrovsk region were also targeted. Preliminary, there were no casualties. Reported by Roman Smoller, Danilo Kobza, UATV News.